the Ninth Island with your boy Simone Raider and my co-host, Mr. Fitz. Y'all know what it is, Raiders, bitch. And we got another special episode of the Ninth Island. We got none other than our big goose, Jeremiah Potassius. What's up, man? How y'all doing? Appreciate man. you guys having me on here, man. Man, thank you for coming on, news. How's everything been going, man? How's life and everything, news? It's good, man. You know, life is uh, life is life. Yeah, yeah. So we've been, I've been uh, steady working and trying to coach these kids out here in the valley. So. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, I want to pivot to like just kind of like the beginning, news. So I know you got drafted since we're in the draft season right now. You know, you got drafted in the third round of 2015 draft to the Tennessee Titans, is. I wanted to ask you how that whole experience was like. Man, that that draft, man, me being drafted was like surreal because you know, yeah, especially for Polynesian kids, we live we live up to that moment, you know, of of going into the NFL. So when I got drafted, it was like a surreal moment for just not for just for me, but like my brothers and my family, yeah, and everybody else who helped me along the way because. It does take a village to raise, you know, to get a kid to where he needs to be. Yeah. So everybody that helped me along the way, it was like a surreal moment for for everybody. So I was excited. Did Did, did you expect to go, like, in a third round or no? Th- what, what What were you expecting? Or do you listen to any of the mock drafts and stuff like so that? So when I so coming out of college, I had I, f- I had a second round grade on me. Okay. So it it like pushed me more to leaving college early my junior year, and. Uh, Soon as I got dra- or you know declared to leave and did the combine and everything, there was all these mock drafts saying I was going in sixth round and you know after whatever after the fourth round, late rounds and all that. But I didn't pay too much attention to it. You know, um, I had a really good agent who told me you know just to worry about the combine. Yeah. So I just did my best at the combine and it, you know everything fell into place. But I did, I wasn't expecting to go that early at all. But with the combine going on right now, or it just wrapped up, man. Just, yeah. How was that experience? You know, I know I know it's a lot of other players there. Do, do you get like nervous, like performing in front of all the? Because that's like a job interview, basically. It, it, it really is. You mean you, you kind of. To me, I got nervous. It was yeah. You get you get a little nervous. A little bit intimidating too, because you see all these players here, and you know you gotta you gotta weigh in, you gotta run, and you gotta you gotta work out for all these coaches. Yeah. And, you just don't know if it was if it was good enough until you get drafted, you yeah, know, yeah. Or, or pro day and stuff like that. But like it, it was intimidating. Um, but then again, as an athlete, you know, walking into a stadium full of hundred thousand people is intimidating. So yeah. you, you got to learn how to just clear block all that outside noise out and just if you're there to run a forty, run the forty. Yeah. You know what I mean? What was your forty? Do you remember it? So like four ever. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting rid of like four forever. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, nah, but I ran <laughs> I ran I thought I was gonna run faster, but I ran a five three laser, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's crazy. I I mean, I don't know why we left. I don't know what our, <laughs> I don't know like what our, 9, 40, our forty right now would probably be like around the double digits. I'm not running no forty, I'm running a ten. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the, the ten yard <laughs> you probably run a four two. <laughs> no, but uh yeah, yeah. I, one thing that always intrigues me about the, the combine is the uh the interviews. Like you you guys mm-hmm. have those interviews with the the the, the coaches and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to ask, like, what teams like interviewed you, and so, how how was that experience? Like? So that 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 was a whole different experience too. Like you you do all the workouts, and then you have they give you this card, and on the back of the card they have all these teams that want to meet with you, and you you got to meet those teams. Okay. And sometimes those teams will hold you over thirty minutes. Sometimes they'll you know you're in the you're in that room for five minutes. Yeah. So you you kind of don't know what what to expect but you know it was it was it was kind of it was nervousing because you you go into these teams they're asking you questions about football you're already playing football you already yeah. know football so but like they put you in that environment where you feel like you don't know football so oh uh, kind of like a twi- you, twi- question huh yeah do you remember any of the questions they asked you so like what was your what was your favorite college play and why against what defense why was this your, why was this the mm. best defense you you went against, or why why would this play be set up great going against this type of defense? Sheesh. You know, and you got to draw the defense up, and you know, you really just got to answer all those questions. Yeah. But like, um, one of the hardest questions for me was when I was at the combine was uh, was 
the playbook, you know, oh, okay, okay. only because only because it's like I got I got thrown into football and I was I was I was athletic. Yeah. So I thought, you know, using my athleticism kind of got me to where. Yeah. Where the NFL. Then once you get in the NFL, you got to really learn football, you know. So it's not like high school. You got block this guy. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So it's like the way they like it is like spots. You know, so if this is your track to this spot, whoever is intersecting that track, you take them. Mm. So it's not really like, hey, you guys block this guy to that guy. So that's, and then when I got in those meetings, yeah, some of them to- taught me how to like, you know, what they were looking for and, and whatnot, but I was just drawing up my college plays. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they, 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 they ask you a lot of football questions to see how much you know football and you know, if you if you're really there for yeah. football, or are you there just for the jersey? Did you get any like out of out of the blue questions, like outside of football? One one question was because I have a cousin yeah. that, that played in the NFL. His name is Paul Fanica. And then um, when I coming out to the coming out of the draft, I was the lineman I was related to, like or, or I guess they matched me to was Mikey Opati. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I mean, I'm answering all these questions and this and that, and I'm you know I'm. I feel like I'm killing it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they asked me, so who are you trying to be? Your cousin or Mikey Upati? And I was like, man, what? So I'm thinking like, well, did any of this not sound good to you guys? Because like, I'm not really yeah, not yeah. none of those guys. So yeah, yeah. But that was like the only random question I really got. Other other teams, they asked me like football questions. So. so with that being said, you know, you get drafted, like we said before. How was it? Moving, cause you, you're from the West Coast, right? You, you're from here, right? Mm-hmm. So Vegas. you played, yeah. You, you played, you played here. Uh, Desert Pines, right? Desert Pines High School, yeah, yeah. So high school, and then you went to Utah, right? Yep, University of Utah. So all that's mostly in, the, in on, on the West Coast and yeah. stuff like that. But then you go to Tennessee. How was that whole change like? And how was it like? You know, when you first got out there, it wasn't. It was a big change, actually, and I wasn't thinking it was going to be a big change, but it was. It was actually a big. It was a really big change because I'm so used to being around Polynesians, <laughs> and yeah. you know, you go out there, and the it was Polynesian. just me and the Uso Marcus. <laughs> oh, oh, you, you yeah, we, were you drafted the same year too? Yeah, oh, 2015 year. 2015, yeah, same year, but uh, our but cousin, was, our <laughs> other cousin, Marcus Mariota. <laughs> we're all cousins. Yeah. <laughs> we're all related. Yeah. But yeah, okay. but yeah, I went out there, and it was like a big change because it was, you know, I had to, you know, I had to get used to other other guys that I wasn't used to but yeah. when, you know I'm coming from Utah I had a whole bunch of Polynesians and then you know out here I yeah. played with a whole bunch of Polynesians so yeah it was it was definitely a new environment I had to get used to it and and I think but I think it kind of helped me too cuz it got me out of my comfort yeah, you sure. know what I mean so I had to learn a lot well my first year in the league how you know how to how to hold myself up or or how to be around people you know, to a certain standard. Yeah. You know, because I mean, you're you're in a workplace. So no, that's true. Did you ever like you started getting closer with Marcus out there since you guys were like mm-hmm. the two polys out there, basically? Yeah. yeah. And then we had the same agent too. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, me and Marcus talked a lot before before the draft, or yeah, yeah before we got drafted over there. Oh, that's that's crazy. How how's it like playing with him? He's cool, man. Marcus is a humble dude. He he's, seemed like it too. Yeah, like, and he's he's one of those guys that'll like. You know, like we we were rookies. Obviously, he was in first round. Yeah, yeah. But he gave us, you know, like all the other rookies that came in with him. He like fed us. She. You know, like, yeah, he gave us his his subway card, and he let us. I don't know <laughs> if I'm supposed to say that, but yeah, he let <laughs> <laughs> my bad. It was my bad, but yeah, he 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 he, he really took care of us and it showed us a lot of love. Like, were were you there at the same time Taylor Lewan was there? I was. Yeah. Okay. So how how was that? How was the whole offensive line, and how was that like? Uh, Relationship, I guess, like being the rook, learning because they was, had a pretty solid offensive line as well. Yeah, well, when I was there, it was uh, Taylor was in his second year. Yeah, um, Chance Warmack was in his third oh, yeah, year. I remember Chance. Um, I was in my first year, um, but they're all good guys, man. I I think when I went into the Tennessee Titans, um, a lot of the guys were were young, um, as far as being in the league. Mm-hmm. You know, so there are a lot of guys were 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 kind of new to the league and. So I think we're all on one mission of just yeah, yeah. trying to make it, you know. Yeah. Like Taylor was in his second year, Chance was in the third year, but Chance was like the vet. Yeah, yeah. 
you know. So it was kind of like we were they they helped me as as much as they could, but at the same time they got to help themselves too. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it, it, and then it, it's a competition at the it, end of the day. It, it is a competition at the end of the day. But then again, it's, I I had to learn how to be a professional and and learn my own shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 with that, like you you go from the Titans and then you start going around to different teams. You even got to play in the AF for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But you finally made your way back to the Ninth Island, obviously, yeah. and play for the Raiders when we came over here in 21. How was that? Like, were you trying to come over here and, it, it you just, know, come back home? Honestly, it happened so, like, again, surreal, like, because yeah. I started coaching kids in 19. Okay. So in 2019, I was out the league for, for like, two years. Oh, damn. And uh, I started – that's when I started coaching and coaching all these kids, took some kids to the UNLV camp, and uh, I saw Greg Olson, who was the OC – at Jacksonville oh, at the time okay. I was there. And he know he recognized me and we, we were having a conversation. He asked me if uh if I was still playing. <clears throat> I wasn't in shape, but I was like, Yeah, I'm still I'm still playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I still wanna play and that next week I had a workout with the Raiders. Oh damn. And, yeah, so and then from there I did I guess I did pretty good. Um shout out to the Raiders again. Uh <laughs> but uh but yeah and then uh Camp rolled around later that year, and they had an offensive lineman retired. And I was fortunate enough they called me yeah, right yeah. down the road. So I remember when he signed, too. I was like, oh, damn. Well, we always get excited when, like, an Uso signs, it don't matter who it is. Yeah. But then I remember they, they had a picture of you. Like, you know how they always take those photos every day during practice or training mm-hmm. camp? And they posted it. And I think it was one with you. A lot of people tagged me, thought it was me. I was like, <laughs> I was like no, that's not me, though. But, like, that, that that was pretty cool. Did you stay throughout the whole season that year? Because mm-hmm. that, was, that was a crazy year. You remember That 21? was a crazy year. That was probably, like, the most craziest year out here in Vegas. And that, that was the was. first year we had fans at the stadium. Mm-hmm. So y- you were under John Gruden for, obviously, a bit. How was John Gruden as a head coach? Man, I'm going to be honest. I love John Gruden, man. John Gruden, he he – he gave me he gave me my second chance and yeah. while I was in camp, you know, and being in the league, man, confidence has a lot to do with yeah. how you play. You know, if you're not confident, you're kind of just there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and so when I went into mind you in 2019 when I retired, I I, I retired with low confidence, you know, with with not a, with not a lot of confidence. Yeah. As soon as I entered the camp, right? John Gruden gave me so much confidence and it, it don't have to be like you're the best or nothing. It's just yeah. it, it could be like Come on, Jeremiah. Yeah. That 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 just a push. head coach saying you yeah, that yeah. gives you that much push. And him saying that and constantly saying, you know, just on me kind of just forced me to like, man, this motherfucker really yeah. really likes me. So like, I you know, I got I got to do my job and not only me though, man, he gave a lot of people second chances and I think John Gruden is an underdog story. Yeah. Like he lives for that. Yeah. You know? And and I, like Darren Waller, like Darren, know, Waller. Second, second Darren Waller, Darren Waller, yeah, right there. And chances. So, I think uh, a lot of players feel the same way that I feel. Like he, he, you know, Gruden is that type of coach that I feel will will fight for you. Yeah, I mean, he he did seem like that. I know a lot of things happened like that that season with him and the emails that went on. Yeah. Uh, how was that finding out? Like you know, just being in the in the room or just being at the headquarters with that all happening. Yeah. So we had a meeting before those emails came out. And he mm-hmm. told us, you know, a little snippet of what was on those emails and everything. And um, to me, it, it wasn't it wasn't like okay, like he he said what he said. Yeah. And you know, whatever's on the emails, whatever it is. But at the same time, like, there's a lot of talk that's football talk. That's locker room talk. Yeah. You know? Which, to me, that's that's what football players do. Yeah. You know, we we. Whatever we say, and you know, supposed to be, private, in the, yeah, you know, in the locker whatever room. Whatever happens in the locker room stays in the locker room, and um, but I I talked to some of the players when that meeting after that meeting got out, and they were, they weren't thinking too much of it until it came uh, out. Yeah, well, it came. It, 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 he told us before it came out, so we knew it was gonna come out. Which he told know, you what, what they we still... just didn't know he was gonna get fired. Yeah, like that was. That was like the shocker right there. Yeah. Like, damn. Like, we knew the emails were going to come out. Yeah. But, you know, him getting, you know, being relieved of his duties was kind of like, kind of like, damn. 
you know. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because it's like, you know, we were on a hot streak that year exactly. well, before he got let go, exactly. and then all that kind of came out, which came out of nowhere. Yeah. Because uh, from a fan's perspective, I, I thought he was kind of done wrong in that in that aspect. But obviously, what he said, you know, wasn't yeah. right and and whatnot. Was there any like players? And I'm not. You don't have to name any names, but were there like some players that kind of felt off about that like after hearing it you know I'm, I'm sure there was there's probably like one or two that that did um but i think you know i i feel like there's a lot of players that that'll ride for gruden too yeah you know but i mean you know you can't control how people yeah everybody feel, makes mistakes you know man. yeah everybody makes mistakes as long as you learn from them and move yeah. on that's right. what counts so. that's true and i mean there's a a lot of mistakes that year. <laughs> uh, with, but you know what? Rich Bisaccia stepped up and bro, I, I love Rich too, I, 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 man. He did his I've thing. heard a lot about Rich, Rich, man. How, man. how was he when he took over as the interim head coach? Because a lot of players that he was good. we've hey, talked to love he, him. He was really good. And you know what I've – what I've uh, during my times in the league, I, I really and I truly believe this, that special team coaches – do great as head coaches because they're they're the one coach that work with everybody. everybody yeah, you know, and I, I when Rich took over, he had a relationship with everybody already. Yeah, and you know, it wasn't like we took a step back, but uh, with Rich there, kind of it, it made us feel like you know we're, we're still on track for, yeah. for everything we we want. I mean, he proved it. Like the end of that season, with everything going on, you know. Uh, one of those things that that went on outside of the John Gruden thing was the Henry Rugg situation. Mm. Now, how was that? Like, well, and where were you at when he found out about that? Because I thought that was that was crazy in itself. Yeah. Like, he's our number one guy, you know, mm. number one receiver, and then you just hear that like his whole he career. Just came off a, a good game from Denver. Steelers, or, or like, yeah, we went to Denver. And, oh yeah, Denver too. He he was yeah. killing it, and then like his whole career, just like like that, just one yeah. night. It was, so how was that? And where were you when you found out about the news? When it happened, I was on my way to the uh, – it happened that night, and I was on my way to the locker room the next day. Mm. And I was getting, like, you know, my family, they were, you know, that report came out. They were texting me and stuff. But, you know, I found out at the locker room. Jeez. And, uh, yeah, it was it was sad because, you know, it was – dude's a good dude, yeah. you know. And he just fucking made a mistake, yep. you yeah. know. And – and it's not so much of him, you know, if you have homies around you and you know your homies in that type of situation, don't put them in that type of situation. Yeah. You know, and that's – it's just unfortunate that that happened. Man. Yeah. And, you know, rest in peace to the to, to the person who, you know, who passed. And the dog. And the dog. And the dog, bro. Yeah. And But, like, it's kind of like, you know, it's, we're, we, we are touchable. Yeah. You know? He just made a mistake. And, yeah. And it cost him a lot. So and and I guess that was, that was one of the reasons why a lot of people were kind of like skeptical about a team coming to Vegas, you know, because they was like, man, it's gonna be a distraction and yeah. all that. I think for the most part, it's been great, yeah. you know. But we've had those stories. I mean, our twenty twenty draft class, our first round pick, Damon Arnett too. Oh man, <laughs> like that, yeah. that whole situation, bro. I was like, <laughs> Damon Arnett, bro. Did our, he get arrested again recently? I, I wouldn't Miami be surprised for cocaine. I think he did. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I think he did. He's like, officer, do you know who I am? <laughs> we had two first-round picks in 2020, and both of them gone. But, but I, I, I think for the most part, Vegas has been good yeah. to the players. And people I have been able to— that Henry Rugg situation kind of woke some people up about— Oh, no, definitely. Or especially the, the organization about how— How to, how to perceive it, how, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that year, like I said, with everything going on, man, Rich Passaccia taking over, Henry Ruggs, uh, John Gruden— we go on a run, I think one of the greatest runs that we've had in quite a while, especially out here in Vegas, yeah. and we end up going into the playoffs. So was, yes, sir. How was that? Like, because in the stadium, it was crazy, man. Like, stadium. it felt like we won the Super Bowl for once, yeah. you know? The Chargers, <laughs> the Chargers game, right? one, the, the Chargers right? game. Yeah. The Chargers yeah. one was crazy. We was there. We was there. That Chargers yeah, was one there. was crazy. You know, we were about to knee it. For real? <laughs> oh, I was going to ask that, too, because a lot of people were wondering if we were going to knee it, but then uh, I think... I forgot what it was. You guys just ended up doing the run with Jacobs. Well, they, they they called timeout. Oh, that would that's what it yeah. was. Stanley called the timeout. Yeah, they called timeout. Oh, Staley, was, Staley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like, what the fuck? So he's like, oh fuck yeah, it, well, let's yeah. run the ball. Let's run it. <laughs> and then that's when Jacobs got the first uh, yeah, the first, first down, down and uh, it was game over. Bro, that was game over. I, 
I remember that situation going into the game was like we, we tie, we both in. It don't matter. That's it. But I didn't want. It. I didn't want that. Like yeah. the Chargers yeah. beat us earlier that season. I was like, no, nah, fuck that. Yeah. We better beat their ass. And then when I always remember Derek Carr doing that little timeout on, on the, the side, <laughs> and then Daniel Carson sealing it up. Man, I, I was like, like I said, it felt like a Super Bowl in there. That man. game was electric, bro. Yeah, that game was that game was dope. I have. I don't think I've. I got goosebumps in a game like oh, that man. in a while. But yeah, that, that game was uh, was definitely, I thought we were like, yeah, shit, it felt like the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it did until we went to Cincinnati. Oh, man. <laughs> we That's lost. another game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> speaking of Cincinnati, they cheated us. Did they? The whistle. Uh, that, that, that one whistle with the blown oh, call, yeah. you remember? And then, uh, well, they, they whistled and we stopped or something, and then they... They yeah, but something. They scored. They threw the touchdown. They gave it to him. Oh yeah, they yeah. Gave they it gave it. Yeah, but it was dead already. It was dead. Whistle was blown. Be... All that shit. Yeah. But I, even with that, I still felt like we had a chance to win it, man. And that kind of came down to uh, number four, man, which I want to talk about too. How was it with playing with Derek Carr? And then, do you guys ever hear the noise outside? Because I know a lot of Raider Nation was kind of split on him. DC was good. DC was really good. I mean, he was good. He was a good teammate. He was good. I mean, I think he was. A, he's a good quarterback. Um, there was a lot of yeah. There was a lot of outside noise that you know was about him and whatnot. But you know, the only thing that we could do is give him more confidence. He's our leader. Yeah. You know what I mean. So we couldn't go against him. Yeah. You know what I mean. And and he's been there for, for like five years, prior. nine years. That, yeah. Well, four years prior. Right? Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, in twenty one. Yeah, yeah. But like, so like he, I feel like you know the team, the team already rallied it behind him, no matter what. Yeah. But he's uh, but yeah, there was some people, you know, some some people don't, you know, don't. It's not a fan of his, and some some are. But I think that's what every player. Some are fans, some are not. That is true. To me, I have no problem with DC. I think I think he's a good quarterback. Um, he's he's good at he's good at the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know Derek Carr, like like we we've talked about him, man. We love Derek Carr. Yeah. Great person. person, yeah. As yeah. <laughs> a person, as a person. I think as, as as fans, like when we watch it, you know, it's like, oh uh, come on, us. No, but we no we, we yeah, love no, him with no, that. I, yeah, we we saying the same thing. <laughs> I, I was wishing for the best when he went to the New Orleans Saints, but same situation. Over but now there. we're like, okay, we're same basically in the same <laughs> same situation. Now we had missed the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but that but that was with DC, man. Um, but in your whole NFL career, I, I I have some questions. You know, who was the hardest person that you had to block, whether it was in practice or in a game? The hardest person I had to block was was a guy named Cameron Wake. Oh, was yeah. when he was with the uh, Dolphins, Miami. right? Yeah, he was with Miami. He was he was a that was the first time I ever seen and went against speed of power like <laughs> like how he has Sheesh. it. But he's like you know he he was good he was real good and he was older like he was playing like he was twenty one. But yeah, he, I had him and the Dominican Sue on the same side. It was it was kind of oh yeah that dude's yeah. crazy. I, I always wanted him to be a Raider <laughs> man. He was wearing red bottom cleats. Oh shit! Yeah, I was like, damn. Well, all that money, you Uji, know. Yeah, <laughs> Uji defensive tackle right here. <laughs> you get him a couple times though, or no? Nah? Oh, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> he said nah. Uh, so how about how about Max? How how was it like going at least in practice and stuff like that? How how was he? Max is good. Max is real good. I mean, he takes practice. When I was there, he practiced like it was fucking game day. I hear I, every, all the time he took it seriously. Time. He even yeah. took the Pro Bowl seriously. <laughs> 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 but, like, even when I seen him do his defensive line drills, and, yeah. you know, he, he he's going 100%. And it might not sh- – like, he he's probably been doing that for the past, you know, ever since he's he's been on the Raider, he's been practicing like that. But it's kind of like – you know, it's, it's that's the process. Yeah. You know, and then now it's showing. Boom! Now it's showing. He's playing every snap a hundred percent. So I mean, and then in practice, going against that guy's. Uh, <laughs> next, next subject. <laughs> that's good. Nah, did you, get, good. you get him a couple times though? Good. Yeah, I got him. I got him like one time, two times. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> Max. If you're on here. Oh, we'll, we'll ask him too. We can say, you remember when uh, Jeremiah got your ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, before I, 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 I give him a question, man, I want to ask, is there any crazy NFL stories that you have? Or a crazy NFL story? A lot of crazy, a lot of the crazy stories come from just downtime with teammates. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and just, you know, just going out or or just even on our three hour lunch break. <laughs> you know, like just the crazy things. And it's really not so like as far as like doing stuff is crazy, but like the conversations and yeah. and everything, that's 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 where the camaraderie comes from and and that's that's really what uh to me that's like those are crazy times, man. And any secrets you want to expose? <laughs> <laughs> uh, D'Angelo Russell. Well, there's this one player that. Paul and Sam. How is he in the locker room? <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's his favorite player. <laughs> That's his favorite player. <laughs> Carl Nesson, man, if you watch him, man. He, he got some solar for you. Shout out to Carl, because, I mean, uh, the Sam, because he held it down when he was right. He did. He did. He did. He he did. I don't want people to fucking talk shit about him. Like, well, he came from Baltimore, so we'll blame Baltimore for that one. <laughs> we don't discriminate. We take all kinds over here at the Raiders. We fuck with everybody. Right. <laughs> I thought he was a... Uh, Oh, no, no. He Cleveland. was drafted by the Baltimore Raiders. Cleveland. There you go. He was at Cleveland. Well, appreciate you, Carl, for holding the Raiders down. Yeah, man. yeah. Much yeah. love, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know me and you personally talked on the side about mental health and, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, is, is there anything you want to shine a light on when it comes to that? Man, after, after, so after 2019, when I, when I got out the league, and I think this is big for all yeah. Yeah, Polynesians especially, man. We live our life to, to play this to, to play this sport, you know, we, you know, we, it's like our one goal, you mm -hmm. know what yeah. I mean? So when I retired in 2019, you know, I did my goal already. I made it to the NFL. There was no goal after that. So like after I got out, it's like everything I learned from when I was a kid, all this football, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, uh, translate that outside of football. So, uh, you know, it left me to being like depressed because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I'm, all I, you know, all I know I do is play football, and I had to learn. You know, and to be honest, like I didn't even know how to do a resume. Like, Damn. yeah, like that. It was like that's how that's how like you know the vision or the road I was going down was straight football. I didn't care about nothing else. Yeah. So like I had to learn how to do a resume and and stuff like that, and it kind of kind of made me feel like like. Has I, have I been wasting my time? My time, yeah. this this whole you know all these years. So, but yeah, the, you know I think I think Polynesian uh, kids, man, we we you know that's our one goal, which is good, yeah. you know, because you know that's fuck the, you know it's the NFL, man. Yeah. But as soon as, but I really think that we need to start, you know, taking Plan B seriously too. Yeah, that, that's a big thing. Like that's a big thing. I, I hear a lot of NFL players talk about it too. Is like. A lot of people grow up, like you say, like yeah. playing football at a young age, and that's all they know. That's all they, they go know. to middle school, high school, go to college, and then NFL, and then after that, most of them don't even know what to do, or they yeah. try figuring it out when they're done. Mm -hmm. Don't you know, know how to manage money, nothing. You know yeah, I, mean? I didn't even know how to get a car off the lot. Yeah, you know, I, like I didn't know about taxes. I didn't know about none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was just focused on if I go to the NFL, I'm good. Yeah, you know, but it's it's not it's not it's not it's not all. You know, sunshine and rainbows yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. It's not. It's it's really not. But it, you know what though? The game is good. If you what you know, if you give to the game, the game will give back. Yeah. So and we're starting to see a lot of players now like start to branch out while they're playing in the in the game. You know, like now that podcast is big. People podcast. are doing their own content now. Yeah. Like it, it, it's good to see that. And, you know, hopefully the younger generation, especially in the like, you know, the poly community. You know now. We're starting to see a lot more of our people like growing other positions outside of, you know, the offensive linemen, defensive linemen, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, you got to see Marcus, you know, Marcus uh, kind of paved the way for, for a lot of the Samoan quarterbacks. Really? And, that, and I, every <clears throat> time I see him in practice, I'm like, man, this dude, yeah. he started something people just don't know. It was a top. They're not really yeah. Polynesian. You know, yeah. Like I, I, when I seen Marcus play, it was like it gave me goosebumps because I'm like, man, this, yeah, that's a Samoan out there, bro. Yeah, you know, I I haven't seen, I never seen a Samoan play until like well, when I was growing up it was Troy Polamalu yeah. and stuff. But like this is with my own eyes, and I'm on his team. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had Marcus to Sopa, but yeah, yeah, he, he so, wasn't really like <laughs> that's my <laughs> favorite player. To a Sopa, yeah. It's the fact that you know me growing up, you know, what I mean, watching the Red, being a Raider fan. Him being Samoan, not him being different than everybody else. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. He was a quarterback. Yeah, he was second string, but it was like, man, if he can make it to that, you know, there is, 
the opportunities are endless. We could do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I give much, much props to, to yeah. Marcus. Because now you're seeing it, you know, I mean, Tua was a top five pick. Tua. And then now, you know, guys like Nico, who's coming up. Nico. A lot of people oh, are seeing yeah. him. Nico. Yeah. But now we got Puka, too. And Puka, yeah. yeah. Puka's out there killing it. So I'm, been, I'm, I'm he was just waiting for the next group of He didn't get offensive receivers. rookie of the, Oh, he didn't even get off? No. He should have got offensive rookie of the year. But then CJ, that, that that's a tough one, though. Uh, yeah. yeah. Puka, but. you got offensive. Of you got it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, it's great to see. It's great to see that. And like you said, man, a lot of people, like the players that we have talked to, talk about how big mental health is, yeah. especially playing the game and not knowing what to do after, whether they're good enough to do anything else outside so, of football. You lose a lot of confidence too outside of football if you feel like you don't have football anymore. Yeah, which is one of the reasons why I went into coaching because you know it was the only avenue that I felt I can. And, you know, give to kids that I've learned. You mm-hmm. know, everything that I learned, I can give. That's the main reason why I started coaching. And I didn't give to the game as much as I should have, mm-hmm. as much as the game gave me. The game was good to me. I felt like I wasn't really good to the game, which is why I owe, I feel like I owe the game to coach yeah. these kids. Not breaking the bank off these kids, but more of just I owe the game that much. Yeah. You know, because the game was good to me. And, you know, it took me a hard time to admit that. The fact that I wasn't I wasn't given to the game as much as I should have, you know. Yeah. As far as training, taking training seriously yeah. and off season off season training and all that. Yeah. So in that in that aspect, I feel like I owe the game. Yeah. If there's one like what what is one thing that you would like tell a young player like somebody that's going up kind of like in your shoes? I have a nephew that that's. About to be a senior, has got multiple offers at like colleges, offensive linemen as well. Like, what's something that you could tell any of these young players that you wish you knew? There's a lot, but like the one, one, one quote I, I, I that stuck that sticks with me is 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 see it through. You know, mm-hmm. only only because you gotta see, you gotta see it through everything. Like you, whatever situation you go through, you know, somebody's been there before. Yeah. Somebody overcame that situation. So just see see it through, you know, whatever adversity you're going through, see it through. Like go through it, okay? But just know after you go through it, it's not it's, that that's not all that's not all it, you know, there's there's another situation that yeah. you have to go through and you just gotta see that through. But at the end of the tunnel, there's gonna be a light right there, you yeah. know what I mean? And you just gotta you just gotta keep on pushing and keep on going. And I think the biggest for Polynesians kids is is consistency. Yeah. Stay fucking consistent yeah because we have there's something in us that we get too comfortable and then we get inconsistent a little bit yeah you know if we could stay consistent stay consistent stay consistent it, it i think that's the biggest biggest thing of staying yeah. in the league is being <clears throat> consistent real quick on top of all the, the the mental stuff and dealing with the nfl was there also a lot of pressure like being from a big Samoan family like to you know to live up to yeah, that and stuff like. Cause I know our people, man. Like they, they, you know, they they like to praise when yeah. when everything's going good. But then when everything's not going good, it's they like disappear. They're like, I hate well, that shit. man. Where they go, <laughs> you know? Shh, man? You guys are speaking the truth right it's now. Like, can I borrow uh, this? If I love this, <laughs> I was yeah. They it was a lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure because it was it was kind of like forced on you as a kid, rather than you choosing. Yeah. Your, your way, you know, yeah. I want to do this, you know, but I, you know, it was kind of like, you're going to play football, you know, and, you know, if you have a family member that made it to the NFL, yeah. that pressure becomes 10 times more yeah. because now you got to, you know, your cousin's there, so you got to go, mm-hmm. you know, so, and I'm half, I'm half someone half Tongan, so my Tongan cousin, he made it to the NFL and it kind of, it kind of put a little bit more pressure on me to make it. Yeah. You know, and and there was nobody, there was nobody out there uh, from my side of town. All of them, you know, Desert Pines. That's real. That was that was being heavily recruited like that. So it kind of it kind of like made me believe like I am gonna go to the NFL. Yeah. You know? So it that's where that's where the no plan B comes in and and everything like and that's where the vision gets you know one one sided yeah. one road only. So that's there is a lot of pressure. And I know there's a lot of Polynesian kids out there with the same, mm-hmm. and you guys and you guys don't say nothing because you guys block it out because that's what we're taught to do. Yeah, 
stop being a bitch. Just go through it, you know. Yeah. But you know, if you, bro, if you're going through something, talk about it and then get back on and do it, you know. Yeah. But yeah, there's there was a lot of pressure growing up. You could either do two things: you could either fold under pressure, or you could apply pressure back. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was taught. So, what was one of the main things that pulled? pulled How did you pull yourself out of the? You know, when you were down and depressed and all that. Man, to be honest, it was my brothers, coaching, and then my wife. My kids around, you know, my wife had to be there. My wife still, my wife took, you know, he, she stood strong through those through those uh, years I was going through it because she could have easily just, like, you know, said, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, She don't have to go through this or not. But she she stuck around, and she, she held me down and, you know, held the kids down when I wasn't really I was there but I wasn't there yeah you know what I mean so she 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 stuck she stuck it uh she held me down and then my brothers helped me out with coaching kids Mm. so it made them it made me feel like hell yeah like I'm doing something positive yeah which I was you know it just made me feel better that they were that they were supporting me and all that yeah so once they once my brother started supporting me with coaching and all that it's kind of it just, it just like I'm like I kind of started the road to, you know, coach, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. being a coach. But it kind of mm-hmm. gave me that passion though. It gave me that yeah. passion and gave me that feeling back, of of playing football. Not so much of playing, but so much of, you know, when I coach this kid and he goes and he gets offered, like yeah. that's what it feels good. Like your part feels real that. good, man. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Really you're giving back to the community. Yes. Do you do you ever want to coach in the NFL, or at least get to that level? I. You know, to be honest, I do. I, I want to be a coach, you know, but it's kind of I. I don't think I want to go that. that oh, okay. Way. You know, I kind of like I, I like the kids. I yeah. like the kids. You know, I see a lot of a lot of kids I coach. I see myself in those shoes. Yeah. So, and some of the kids are out here. They don't. They don't. Their parents. They don't have the money yeah. to you know to to be training and all that all that stuff. So, you know, I kind of. It goes hand in hand because you're from Vegas too. You know what I mean? Putting that work in for the right. community. And like I said, I owe the game that much. I feel like I owe. I I need to coach these kids to keep the game going and stuff like that. So, shout out back to what you were saying too. Shout out to all the good wives out there. Man, shout out. You know, shout out to all the good. My wives wife held out me there. down when I went to uh, prison. You know, in and out the system and all the the crazy shit my dumb ass did. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. You know, your wife yeah. held you down. She held me down. Shout out man. to all the good wives out there. Shout out. Wives. Sidewives. <laughs> no sidewives over here. You're going to get me in trouble, motherfucker. All the mains and sides. In, in prison. <laughs> Myself? I was just joking. No, no, no. You you right, though. You're you right, though. Uh, um, with, with that, you know, like, I, I got a couple more before we head out of here. But with, with the whole family stuff, like, when I do content, it, it's tough to do content and also balance family stuff. Yeah. So you being in the NFL, traveling, doing all that, practices, how was it? Was it hard balancing it? You know what? It wasn't hard. I didn't have. I didn't have. I only had one kid. Yeah. So oh. it wasn't. It wasn't as hard. And then, you know, I had my second kid in 2019. Had my third kid in 2020, and. The next kid in 2022, so it was all after I was kind of oh, okay, okay, out okay. the league. Man, I'm I'm glad I'm out watching my kids because I knew if I was in the league, I probably wouldn't be. Oh yeah, you know, I, it's kind of it's kind of weird because I grew up, I grew up, you know, Polynesians grow up and they think, you know, oh let me buy my kids this, they're okay, they yeah. feel good. But no, like you know, I, I I had to learn from my wife how to actually be involved in my kids' life. Yeah. 